I hope you're so far enjoying all the studies we've had. And uh, I trust that in this study is going to be especially edifying as we continue through the book of Psalms. You know, Ben, we're moving into this week's Our Lord's Reigns. Mm -hmm. And some folks may be wondering, why are we doing this in addition? There are so many resources on YouTube already. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, myself through the week, I look at the Sabbath School University by Derek Morris mm -hmm. from Florida. I'm looking at a few other Sabbath schools. 3ABN has one. Doug Bachelor from his church. There's so much material out there. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the more we put out there in digital space, the more uh, people, mm -hmm. even if it's per chance, could get on, listen, and, and learn something. Yeah. But at the same time, we want to engage our church members, mm -hmm. different teachers, even youth eventually, mm -hmm. in a dialogue and discussion. I'm looking forward to the day when on this panel it would be not just you and I, mm -hmm. the but there would be here. two or three young people mm -hmm. having deeper conversation, discussing our weekly right. studies, because it's truly spiritual food that we need mm -hmm. in our lives. Absolutely. We do need that spiritual food. And actually, before we get into the spiritual meat and food. Something I always like to do before I have a meal, especially with family, is we pray. That's right. Right. So let's have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this time. And as we go to study your word, we ask for your guidance and your leading. We pray that you please help us to understand Psalms and help us to apply the truth to our hearts, that we may reflect Jesus, his character, and our lovely Savior. So Lord, we pray for your presence here. We pray for your leading. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, Ben, uh, below this video, we're going to leave a few links for people mm -hmm. to actually visit other resources. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there is a really good resource I want to mention, sabbath.school, period, just sabbath.school. And when you go there, it has so much. You could read the lesson, you could watch the video recorded, you could have PDF of lesson, you could have teacher's PDF, mm -hmm. you could do easy reading PDF, you could have Ellen White Notes PDF, mm -hmm. and it's also put to audio, uh, links to mission video, mission story, everything is there. People really going extra mile, uh -huh. providing resources, making sure no mm -hmm. one is a miss mm -hmm. of what we're studying through the quarter. And I think you're using this site too, right? I am. Oh, I use uh, it. Because yeah. sometimes you pull up the Ellen White notes for the lesson. So yeah. this is really great resource, sabbath.school. That's all we have to type in that mm -hmm. URL uh, search line, and mm -hmm. it will come up with a lot of good resources. It pulls it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. As I reflect on this whole lesson, uh, I look how the authors structured it. First, it addresses what gives him that claim to yeah. reign. He's a creator. It starts yeah. there, you yeah. see. Why does he reign? Well, because he's a creator. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to look deeper into the subject of what does it mean that he reigns? What does it mean to us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He reigns is a simple statement, but does he really reign? Oh, and absolutely. what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and as I reflect on this, I, I realize... By the way, last week when we talk about Lord's Prayer, we mentioned that when Jesus um, summarized all the Psalms mm -hmm. in that instructive prayer for disciples, there was that line, your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. So this reign of God on earth mm -hmm. is in that prayer, mm -hmm. your kingdom come. And there are a lot of Psalms. For instance, if you open to Psalm 2, right? Mm -hmm. Psalm 2, verse 4. It says, he who sits in heaven shall laugh. Yeah. Other translations say the one enthroned mm -hmm. in heaven. Because sitting is not just sitting on some chair. Mm -hmm. It's a symbol of sitting on a throne. Right. So the one enthroned in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. And that's mm -hmm. speaking of all the kings of the earth mm -hmm. and rulers that take counsel and conspire and want to do things against God. You know, mm -hmm. um, as you go more, for instance, Psalm 14, and I'm just mm -hmm. going to run quickly through a few Psalms here. Psalm 14, uh, it starts with saying the fool had mm -hmm. said in his heart, there is no God, God yeah. right? <laughs> but as you look at verse 2, the Lord looks down from heaven mm -hmm. upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. So this idea of God as a ruler of heaven, as a king of heaven, is mm -hmm. there in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to Psalm 145, um, and I'm just doing 
few random uh, psalms here, Psalm 145, for instance, verse 13, it says, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom mm -hmm. and your dominion endures throughout all generations right. and so it goes on and on and on psalms from 93 to 100 mm -hmm. they're known as messianic kingdom psalms right but then i'm thinking even now today we love those songs for instance the splendor of a king mm -hmm. clothed in majesty lets mm -hmm. all the earth rejoice mm -hmm. how great is our god it's a well-known mm -hmm. song that is literally based on Psalm 97. Mm -hmm. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad, let the distant shores rejoice. Mm -hmm. My personal favor, and I want to ask you, what are your, if you have any songs or contemporary songs that deal with mm -hmm. this reign of God, mm -hmm. my personal favorite is Our God is an Awesome God. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. as you go through this hymn, it says he's, He reigns from heaven above. Mm-hmm. With wisdom, power, and love, our mm -hmm. God is an awesome God. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the focus today. That's God nice. who's yeah. enthroned as a king, God who reigns. Right. Mm -hmm. And so looking at Psalm 93, which is our memory text, says, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. And so the Psalms celebrate God as the one who's the sovereign reigner. He's the sovereign king. Um, it's a picture of the magnificent enthronement of deity upon a throne established from everlasting to everlasting. So it's not like God ever abdicates his throne. It's never like God sets aside his throne and says, yeah, forget about it. Um, he's always reigning from everlasting to everlasting. Um, but you may say, well, how do you reconcile that with Jesus? Isn't Jesus king of kings and lord of lords? And he set aside his kingly attire to come down to heaven, mm -hmm. right? You may argue that too, right? But we know God is Trinity, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? And so it's one God who mm -hmm. reigns forever. Yeah. It's not a dynasty of gods. Mm -hmm. It's one God. One. Mm -hmm. one. And this whole subject of Trinity, we're not going to get too, too far into it, but the idea is, and it's interesting you brought it up, on earth, kings and rulers know that their time is limited. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they're always setting up to make sure there is a successor, yeah. someone who'd rule after them. Right. And, and there's dynasties that come and go, but with God, He is the King mm -hmm. forever and ever. There's, there's no other. No. And the whole Bible is based on that assertion that there's only one real kingdom. Mm -hmm. Other kings are not really kings. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, as we go into Sunday lesson, it, it bases everything on the fact that He has created us. Mm -hmm. He has made us. And that's why He is the King. Mm -hmm. No king could ever claim of creating a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Sure, there are kings who established the kingdom, but he goes beyond. He created us, yeah. and because of that, he is a king. Mm -hmm. So, as we open Psalm 8, that is the first psalm that is recommended for us to read, mm -hmm. it praises God, mm -hmm. um, and then it brings to this interesting statement that many translate in funny ways what is a man from verse 4 mm -hmm. that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you consider him or visit him mm -hmm. for you have made him a little lower than what does your bible say the angels the angels mm -hmm. and that's what many zoom in but the fact mm -hmm. is that in hebrew there's a word elohim mm -hmm. and if you have different translations or you know some of those uh, Bibles that have mm -hmm. um, marks and notes there. It says Hebrew Elohim, God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some translate it as God, lower, lower than God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me that's beautiful because if he is the king mm -hmm. and we the humans mm -hmm. are in his image, what does it make us? Mm -hmm. You could argue some people would say, oh, it makes you like a demigod, right? Because you're like him, but you're not. It's it's a somewhat secular perspective, but yeah. from biblical perspective, we right. are also mm -hmm. princes, yeah. princesses. Harvard we Harvard. are royalty. Mm -hmm. And that's why Bible focuses on this, that we are royalty. Mm -hmm. But to push this, uh, this further, you remember Jesus is said, and it's on the record in the Gospel of John chapter 10, mm -hmm. uh, when he's attacked there for blasphemy, he turns to them and says in verse 34, mm -hmm. is it not written 
in your mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that he's referring to Psalms yeah. as a law. As a law, yeah. Okay. That's what, yeah. Uh, there is a Torah, yeah. there is a law, but here he's referring to Psalms. Yeah. And he says, I said, you are gods. Yeah. And he is referring to another usage of this term in the Psalms. In fact, mm. it's Psalm 82. Yeah. Um, do you have it open or yeah, I'll Psalm 82 yeah. verse yeah. 6? Yeah, 82 verse 6. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Let's read it. It says, uh, I have said... You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And so again, the same word in Hebrew is used, Elohim. Mm -hmm. And so translators don't say you are angels, because that would be awkward, okay? Yeah. He says you are gods, and mm -hmm. you are children of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So this idea of God mm -hmm. as the king of the universe, an idea of us being mm -hmm. created as him to mm -hmm. be kings, mm -hmm. is placing huge responsibility on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if people are curious why uh, Septuagint, Greek translation, suggested angels, is mm -hmm. because by that time, the two centuries before Jesus, mm -hmm. um, Jewish rabbis have created a whole hierarchy <coughs> of angels. Yeah. As they look at their scriptures, and um, for instance, in Ezekiel, there's all kind of different angels mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah, different angels. Mm -hmm. In Daniel, some people may not think of this, but for instance, in Daniel, mm -hmm. you hear about the watchers. Uh, yeah. So they would create a special rank of angels, the watchers. Oh, the watchers, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. In Isaiah, uh, I think it's chapter 33, verse 7, the valiant ones. Mm -hmm. And so they would create a whole new class of Erelim, you know, the angels. And so they created hierarchy. And in this hierarchy of 10 levels of angels, mm -hmm they put one as Elohim. Ah. And so since then, whenever they see Elohim, oh, they, they would say angels. angels. Mm -hmm. Now we know it's wrong, because mm -hmm. from Genesis 1, it's mm -hmm. not the angels who created us, yeah, it's, it's God, God who did Elohim, mm -hmm. who created us. So we have to be careful here. Mm -hmm. But as we're looking at this concept of God as our king, mm -hmm. God as our creator who made us, to me it's huge encouragement to know that from the very beginning, his intent for us not to be something way down there, dust. No. Even though we're made from the dust, but he raised us to be kings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're to be like God. As a, if we're part of the royal family, then we're expected to behave as part of the royal family and live mm -hmm. as a royal family, to have the mannerisms and behavior as one, um, like God, I should say. Right. All right. Not now, being God. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's look at Psalm 100. Okay. And there is a five verses. It's a short psalm. Mm -hmm. So let's read it and let's ask ourselves this question. What does it tell us about God's character? Mm -hmm. What does it reveal to us about God as a creator and the king? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Mm. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Mm. Now, there are a lot of things here. Yeah. God is presented here as the shepherd, yeah. and we are the sheep of his pasture. Mm -hmm. He has the palace because mm -hmm. we're entering into his gates with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. into his courts, and his palace is huge because if you've got courts, mm -hmm. it's not just a small shack, small house. Yeah. But then it also describes his character. He is merciful and his mercy is everlasting. Mm -hmm. His truth endures to all generation. So as you look at this God, mm -hmm creator and king mm -hmm. is it easy to consider him as your personal king mm -hmm. because nowadays uh, we don't like kings in fact anyone who who wants to claim kingly authority we see them as dictator mm -hmm. and so this whole image of god as a king may not be politically correct today 
oh, because the royalty has been thrown down and mm -hmm. and even British royalty struggles mm -hmm. to uh, retain their status, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, people today are gearing toward democracy more and more. So mm -hmm. why are we emphasizing this royal status of God, God mm -hmm. as a king? Why is that important? It's important because when you have this uh, kingly mentality or you have this uh, view of God as a king, you're led to respect him and admire him. There's something, I, I use this term like loosely, mystic. There's something special about that. There's something that comes with an awe of reverence with that. Uh, and beyond that, if you look at just... Uh, I, our view of kingship and monarchy has been tainted because humans are messed up. When we think about kings and, and monarchies, yeah, there's a lot of negativity and baggage that comes with that. But God is perfect, and God, he actually came down to be a servant, did he not? And so his kingly power and authority was vested in his servanthood and actually helping us and lifting us up. He's the best king ever. He's the best king that you'd ever want because he loves us, and he actually sacrificed, for a period of time, sacrificed his um his uh beautiful you know his beautiful kingdom and mansion to come down here to this earth the sin infested earth he willingly how many today would would lay aside their palace to come and help out the poor man mm -hmm. right? very few that's a thought now yeah. we're gonna get deeper into this yeah it seems that the principle of royalty in kingdom in the bible is quite different than what it is today. Mm -hmm. The king in the Bible times really meant to care for his people. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about God assigning us that royal responsibility, it starts with Adam when mm -hmm. God says, I give you dominion. Mm -hmm. So the concept of kingdom and dominion is a concept of care. It's mm -hmm. a concept of stewardship. It's a concept of taking care of things. And so yeah. as we're looking at this concept in Psalms of our Lord reigns, mm -hmm. there's a constant battle between God's view of how the reign should be uh -huh. and the alternative, mm -hmm. the substitute, the one that enemy brings, okay? Mm -hmm. And with that, he creates a whole system of idolatry, a whole system of alternative view of what the kingdom is mm -hmm. which is based on dominance superiority mm -hmm. hierarchy mm -hmm. and it's totally different than mm -hmm. what god has in mind when he right. talks about kingdom and so when we look at psalm 97 for instance let all be put to shame who serve carved images who boast of idols mm -hmm. worship him mm -hmm all you gods. So there's that constant battle mm -hmm. between the false worship, yeah. false kingdom, false attitudes of what um, royalty is, mm -hmm. and the true picture of God as a king and the true royalty. Mm -hmm. What would you say on that? Yeah. Well, the two kingdoms are diametrically opposed in their opposites. Um, you see that the term there in verse 7, the boast, that boast themselves of idols the boasting it reminds me of satan mm -hmm. right? boasting proud and i feel like our 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 view of monarchy and kingship is twisted because all we see is humans leading and when humans lead they're imperfect you have human nature everything gets messed up and twisted mm -hmm. and so there's this diametric opposition and when i see god and his reigning his reigning wasn't just some uh lordship and oppressive uh domination but what it was is a ministry of love and care and upholding um, something where he gives power away he doesn't hoard it to himself mm -hmm. but he actually empowers his people his children you know, I, I've been reflecting on this because in the Bible, there's always this concept of kingdom of light, kingdom mm -hmm. of God, and a kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. um, devil is described as prince of this world, and mm -hmm. I could use another word, the king of this world. Mm -hmm. A book of Revelation presents a time when his kingdom ends, mm -hmm. when he's put in chain. And we're not talking physical shackles, mm -hmm. simply uh, there would be no people living on earth mm -hmm. who would abide his reign mm -hmm. and so he would not be able to do anything so his reign will end because there would be no people mm -hmm. uh, with god when we pray thy kingdom come his domain his reign is exercised among people who consider him the king mm -hmm. 
while no one disputes his reign in the universe here on earth, his kingdom, I could say, is limited. I know it's a strange statement, but mm -hmm. his kingdom is limited based on our freedom. Where we mm -hmm. allow him to be the king, mm -hmm. he is the king. Yeah. But those who do not consider him the king, he cannot exercise his rulership, his kingdom there. Well, but I'd have to, I'd have to interject here because mm -hmm. Job, Job to a certain extent experienced the domination of Satan, even though he was following after God. He was someone mm -hmm. who experienced a lot of things. God allowed it, of course, right? Mm -hmm. God was in control. Mm -hmm. Right, but he, as a man after God's own heart, we could say, had experienced the domination of Satan and all these things taken away from him, mm -hmm. and all this hurt. Um, and, and yet, Job expected mm -hmm. God to do the justice. Yes, yeah. So, Job, knowing that God is the ultimate king, he mm -hmm. expected God to also be the judge of the situation. Mm -hmm. And with this, we come to the Tuesday lesson that God is not only the king; He is the judge. Mm. And again, historically, people who were subjects of a particular king, they expected him not only to protect them mm -hmm. and provide for them, yeah. but to also judge mm -hmm. and to assure that justice is done. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a Psalm 75 yeah. that gives thanks for God's righteous judgments. Do you want to reflect on that? Do you want to cover mm -hmm. some of this psalm for us? Yeah, I definitely can. When I look at the Psalm 75, the actually the, the superscription or the subscription is um, al Tasketh, which means do not destroy. So you have this whole idea, do not destroy. It's a hymn of deliverance from the enemy. And so you have this, um, it's probable that it was uh, employed to celebrate Israel's deliverance from Assyria. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have this idea that God is judge, he's sovereign, and he delivers people. Um, the poem is vividly dramatic and especially in its presentation of God as the righteous judge. Um, it's also, um, it's a psalm of rebuke to the impatience of man because we can be impatient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, the God's name or perfections are set forth by his wondrous works. Um, if you look at, um, verse one it says for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare so God's works declare that he is self-existent, that he is here and he is near with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, say, so look at this psalm. Uh, verse 2 really stood out for me. Mm -hmm. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. Yeah. God knows the best time. Mm -hmm. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have to trust that in his time, he as a judge will issue the right verdict. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's an interesting statement that God speaks to the wicked saying, do not lift up your horn. Mm -hmm. I could physically mm -hmm. picture that, you know, yeah. raising the horn, trying to... Trying to bully your way. Right, mm -hmm. to, to hit, to... And God's saying, don't. Mm -hmm. God has that authority as a judge to judge. Yeah, and he's not a judge that's like far distant or anything. He's a judge who's very personal and connected. So he understands the situation... Completely, 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we just uh, talk um, right now about the prayer. Mm -hmm. And I found that interesting that the Hebrew concept of tefillim, mm -hmm. the word of prayer, mm -hmm. um, is closely connected with surrendering into God's judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay. The root word there is just that, surrendering oneself into God's judgment. Mm -hmm. And as much as subjects of God, the king, mm -hmm. we expect him to judge the wicked, to judge the enemies, to judge those around us, mm -hmm. we have to be also prepared for him to judge our us. hearts. Mm -hmm. When you turn to Psalm 14, mm -hmm. take a look with me at Psalm 14. It is an interesting concept there, and we already quoted that. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. So it's that mm -hmm. concept of God looking, examining us here on earth. Mm -hmm. We are under his judgment, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. And that's something we have to be conscious of. Now, if you go with me to another psalm, Psalm 82, 
And again, we're, we're not going to cover all of them. This is just a brief review. We invite people in their spare time as you read Psalms through this season. Pay attention to all these different uh, concepts. Psalm 82. God stands in a congregation of the mighty. Mm -hmm. So does. you have this vision of heavenly court, right? Mm -hmm. Where God... Um, and see, that divine assembly, assembly of gods, literally, if you read in mm -hmm. Hebrew... Okay, yeah. so that's all another discussion. But notice he judges among the gods. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. um, that is an interesting concept because we believe in one God. Mm -hmm. And this may confuse people. What do you mean? He judges among gods. Mm -hmm. what, what should be our response to that for people to say, yeah, there's other gods besides God. Mm -hmm. Our response is no, God is one He's and one. only. Mm -hmm. So what, what does it mean that he judges among the gods? Mm -hmm. So when I look at it, when I, when I think of it in simplistic, simplistic ways, and we were looking at how um, in translations you have like uh, Elohim as God or as angels, right? Mm -hmm. And when I think about it, if God is judging amongst the gods, um, Paul, he says uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, 20, he says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, idols, devils, and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Mm -hmm. And so the way I kind of view this is that God is judging. He's not only just judging humanity, but we're also judging the falling angels. Mm -hmm. And there is a judgment going on. We remember Paul also says that we will judge angels too. And even our false gods. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. we hold anything as God, mm -hmm. it, it's gods with small g, mm -hmm. not capital G. Yeah. So God is looking at the things that we put in God's place in our life on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And God is going to judge that too. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Uh, as you look further in this psalm, uh, that's where that quotation comes. I said, you are gods, yeah. right? So God gives us that status. Uh, but then as you continue, but you shall die like man and fall like one of the princes. Mm -hmm. Arise, O God, judge the earth, mm -hmm. for you shall inherit all nations. So again, the concept is God mm -hmm. is a supreme God. Yes. No matter how we may elevate some things, and they did it back in their days. They had their own idols, their own gods, and so on. But God is supreme. Mm -hmm. He ultimately charges all judges, all kings, all presidents, mm -hmm. if they are unjust. Right, right. And I like that because, like, I mean... As individuals, the temptation is as sinners and sinful individuals. The temptation is is that we want to get revenge and one up on people when people wrong us or when governments wrong us. Um, you know, we have whole fights in other countries over the fact that they're unhappy with the government. Mm -hmm. They try to take it out. Um, they try to erect their own and get vengeance. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end of the day, if you realize God is sovereign, He's all reigning, you can allow yourself to step back and say, no, violence is not the answer. I'm looking to God. God will sort out the situation. So. You know, it's interesting. People who ignore God, we've seen development of atheism mm -hmm. over the last almost two centuries. Mm -hmm. They devalue human life. Mm -hmm. And so this concept of God as a creator raises the price on humanity. Mm -hmm. It lifts us up. Mm -hmm. But if God is not a creator... And we're here just by evolving into higher status, mm -hmm. then our life is not important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you hear of those tyrants who sent millions to their death. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking of Stalin because that impacted my childhood because mm -hmm. I did not have grandfathers because mm -hmm. they all perished under Stalin's regime. Mm -hmm. uh, to him, humans were not important. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah, expendable. Mm -hmm. But when. Exactly. And, and here, Bible brings this fact that God is the creator, and mm -hmm. therefore he is the judge. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking of significance even of three angels' message, Revelation mm -hmm. 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worship him. Worship him mm -hmm. as a creator. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the hour mm -hmm. of his judgment it's is come. come. Mm -hmm. And so the creation and judgment are closely interconnected. Mm -hmm. Some say, well... Why are you bring this up? God is love, God is mercy. Mm -hmm. Well, it is the gospel that mm -hmm. the love and mercy will still meet the evil head on mm -hmm. and deal with it. Mm 
-hmm. without dealing with evil, how could you talk about love and mercy? Mm -hmm. Evil has to be met and has to be dealt with and has to be ended, mm -hmm. you see. And so this is where this concept of God as judge is very important. Mm -hmm. Now let's move into Wednesday lesson and let's consider the connection here. God, creator, God, the king, God as judge. Mm -hmm. Why should we consider that as trustworthy? So looking at Psalm 105, um, I see here and you read it. And it says, He hath remembered his covenant forever and the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. So God has made a covenant. He's made promises to us. And this gives us an assurance and uh, the assurance of salvation because God never fails. He never lies. And he's promised that he's with us and he's made this covenant and agreement with us that uh, he will be sovereign judge. He'll take care of us. He's our king, sovereign, savior, all that. Mm -hmm. uh, notice that that covenant is the ancient covenant. He's referring mm -hmm. to covenant made with Abraham, his mm -hmm. oath to Isaac. And he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute. And I love here because you already have different words. Covenant, oath, statue. Mm -hmm. Now, we deal with covenants all the time, Ben. Mm -hmm. You walk into a restaurant, you're entering covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. They give you food, mm -hmm. expecting what? Expecting a payment. Yeah. A payment. So th there's a covenant. You get your cell phone, there's a mm -hmm. covenant. Mm -hmm. We are surrounded by covenants. Mm -hmm. And, and Bible is basically saying that God puts himself under covenant. And that's interesting because we're talking about him as a king. And yet he is the king who puts himself in that dependency with his subjects, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Earlier you said, you know, imagine God giving up his mm -hmm. glory, coming down here to the lowly estate. Mm -hmm. um, usually people love their... Um, entitlement you know if they've got the power mm -hmm. and they could use it they go for it mm -hmm. but here god is saying i'm putting myself in a covenant agreement with you mm -hmm. i'm making you a promise and i'm going to deliver on this promise mm -hmm. and it's beautiful yes it is yeah uh, and so when we talk about covenant i want you to really think of the word promise mm -hmm. oath okay um the psalm that really stands out to me, and I keep repeating it, uh, hoping that one day everybody gets it, okay? Psalm 119. And you see that every single line of that psalm is about what? The commandments, the law, the mm -hmm. testimonies, the covenant, the precepts, statues. You see, so this psalm, the longest psalm. is about the law. It's about the law. It's an ode, O-D-E, mm -hmm. to the law of God. And it's beautiful. And when you're, if this is all about the law, it's not just, um, you know, do's and don'ts, but it's actually promises. God's commandments are promises to us. You can always look at the commandments or the law as a negative. I mean, you always hear this talk of do's and don'ts, right? People complain, do's and don'ts. But they don't look at it as a blessing. All right, Galatians chapter 3. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at verses 26 to 29. It says here, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29 is a significant one at the end. It says, And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So the covenant is more than just an agreement, it's a promise. And when we're Christians, we are now partaking of this promise. As the Israelites of old had taken of the promises of God, so were we baptized anew in Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. We receive the promise and we have these promises with God. And so I invite you mm -hmm. um, listeners to consider testimony, to consider covenant, all mm -hmm. these things that quite often are projected in a negative way, something all we have to put up with as a wonderful concept of promise. Mm -hmm. Whenever you read in a Bible of testimony of God mm -hmm. or of covenant of God, paraphrase it as it's God's promise mm -hmm. to rescue and redeem me. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going back then to Psalm 119, and I'm just going to look at a number of verses. Notice the attitude of psalmist here toward God's covenant, toward mm-hmm. God's testimony, toward law. Mm-hmm. And I'm emphasizing this again because we live in a world that people object to laws. They, they have issues. Why, why the law? Mm-hmm. In fact, the kingdom is based on the laws mm-hmm. because those laws become boundaries and standards and guarantees of mm-hmm. order within the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So look at David's attitude, verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's a promise. Yeah. So when David hears God's promise, he's rejoicing. Mm-hmm. Now, further, the same chapter, verse 31. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Mm-hmm. Do not put me to shame. So another way, God, uh, David is saying, I cling to your promises, right? Mm-hmm. Verse 36. Incline my heart to your testimonies. And that's an interesting because David's almost admitting that sometimes our heart is not really favored to the testimony. Yeah, so he's saying, God, it. turn my heart to your testimony. Incline yeah. my heart to your testimony. Uh, go with me to verse 88 later on. Mm. Revive me according to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse 99 I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a beautiful word. To the younger generation, those you in school, if you commit what's God, the word of God to your mind, mm-hmm. you know what Bible promises? You will be smarter than your teachers. Very good. Literally, mm-hmm. if you put the word of God in your heart, That's the promise. That's the testimony of God. Mm -hmm. Look at Psalm 111. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Do you see the theme emerging here? Mm -hmm. God's promise should make us rejoice. God's testimony is the beautiful thing, and they are sure there's something we could fully trust in. So as we're looking at this Thursday, I I looked in the lesson and there's one verse that really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. We're still in the same Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. You know, really, we could do a few hours in this Psalm 119. Verse 165. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful promise Mm -hmm. that when you are in compliance with God's will, Mm -hmm. When you live here on earth as a citizen of his kingdom, Mm -hmm. you have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, my personal example, I have a bit lead food when I drive. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I am at peace, I find when I listen to the Bible, it changes even my driving. Mm -hmm. I become more mindful of people around me. Mm And then I don't have to worry about any blinking lights behind me. Mm -hmm. You see, it could be such a simple thing as living in compliance with laws of the country Mm -hmm. because God wants us to be law obedient citizens. Mm -hmm. You see, and that would give you peace. And it's Mm -hmm. right there, it's a promise. Mm -hmm. Now, could you think of any practical illustrations of how keeping Mm -hmm. God's testimonies Mm -hmm. blesses us in life? Mm -hmm. And how breaking those testimonies would Mm -hmm. get us in trouble. Oh, absolutely, yes. I remember there was times in my life where, well, I remember the the fifth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, that their days may be long. Um, And there's a, it's a commandment that's described as a commandment with promise. And I realized that there's been times where, especially when I was younger, like I disrespected my parents. I did. And it came to really back. back is that a confession, Ben? It is. It is. So mom and dad, if you ever watch this, I'm sorry. <laughs> but really, there's times where I did. And, uh, you know, I was, I was summarily punished for that. And I sh- as I should have been. And when I think about it now, as in my later years, as I've continued in a loving relationship with my parents, you know, listening to the will, obeying them, honoring them, respecting them, I found that I've always been uh, supported and um, shepherded in my life, sometimes through them in uh, special ways and other ways through, uh, and, and sometimes another means too, where I've uh, received a blessing from my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I know that you know the blessings are are not and sometimes they're based on obedience, of course, right? Because God, you know, parents want you to obey, right? But I found that you know when you honor your parents, there's always blessings for you in store for that. Sometimes from your parents or otherwise too. Um, another thing, uh, in violating commandments. Oh, I used to be addicted to so many things. I'm a convert to the faith. Okay, so um, I wasn't always uh, an Adventist, and so I lived in disobedience to God's laws. And um, I experienced multiple broken relationships, um, addiction of different kinds. And so when I violated God's law, I found I was trapped in sin. I couldn't get out of the addictions that I was in. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I wanted release. I wanted help, but I couldn't get out because I was stuck. So it wasn't until I turned to God's testimonies and started putting this into practice in my life that I actually got victory and got out of those things. I experienced freedom. And so... By violating the laws of God, I found that I was shackled in obedience to another power, and that other power was the devil. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you've chosen to share that personal testimony. Mm -hmm. And, and realize the word testimony is a word for witness. Mm -hmm. Whenever you testify to something, you're, you're witnessing to something that, that you've experienced, right? Mm -hmm. This to honor your parents. Mm -hmm is a testimony, a promise. It's not only commandment, mm -hmm. it's a promise. Yes. God says, I will bless you. Mm -hmm. Your days would be prolonged. You would be in good health. Mm -hmm. And I wish more young people would understand that. Mm -hmm. Because many of them probably experienced their parents telling them, well, I told you so, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Now, in a loving way. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you consider the big picture of God, who's loving, who's caring, Mm -hmm. makes even more sense this commandment. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Because in honoring parents, we're also honoring, honoring God. God. Yeah. Our first understanding of God really is as children through our parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so as we're looking at this whole lesson in review, there is a picture of this great controversy. Mm -hmm. The picture of war between good and evil. Mm -hmm. God is a sovereign king of the mm -hmm. universe. Mm -hmm. He's permitted the enemy for a time mm -hmm. to play out his scenario. Mm -hmm. But God will bring it to an end on his terms. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, he will judge. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, he will restore the creation to its original perfect order. Yeah. God who created will recreate. Mm -hmm. When he deals with the glitch of evil, he will create anew to where it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And when you understand this picture, you cannot help but be happy mm -hmm. and joyful and sing. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you read the book of Psalms, it's evident and obvious that the authors understood that, mm -hmm. that God, the ultimate ruler, will judge, will fix it, will bring things to where it ought to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's important. By the way, the next week's lesson is about that healing aspect of God. Oh, we'll so be looking great. at Psalms, healing and restoration that God wants to bring to our lives. Mm -hmm. So I encourage as you study through this quarter, look at the big picture of Psalms. Mm -hmm. Not just at the particular lesson and particular day, but how they all interconnect as we're considering what God is in our lives, what role he plays in our daily lives, in our experiences. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that as we come to, to the end of this study, that your own testimony, your own experience with God would be greater than before. So the mission spotlight mm -hmm. that we're going to show right now is about this little boy, Alex, from Nicobar Islands. Mm -hmm. And his experience and the Adventist school in the Christian education. So let's watch. Alex attended the only Seventh-day Adventist school on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These islands sit in the Bay of Bengal. They are part of India, even though they sit closer to Southeast Asian countries of Myanmar and Indonesia. Alex has fond memories of learning at this island school. I love Teacher, teachers in the school because they, they were teach, they teach me very kindly. The school's curriculum is based on the Bible. 
they only have three teachers, but what they lack in quantity, they make up for in quality of teaching. The school starts with prayer, then after that, uh, before they are going to classes, it starts with the, um, some story be by, related to Bible. So that they, after telling that, they will teach them one memory verse every day. This school has a positive reputation in the community. Every parent wants to see their child succeed, which is why Alex's parents trusted the Adventist school to educate their son. Unfortunately, the school only offers nursery and preschool levels for kids. The students have to look for other education options once they finish preschool. Last year, we had a 32 students. Among those, nine were graduated. That means they finished UKG, upper KG, then went to other school because we don't have the higher, higher studies. Then uh, primary school, we don't have. At his new school, Alex was required to attend class on the Sabbath. But thanks to his prior education, he was able to defend his faith to his teacher. I told to my teacher that uh, the fourth commandment is the uh, is, uh, we have to follow the Holy Sabbath. So I have to go to the Sabbath because I will obey to God. So I told to my teacher that uh, if I don't listen to my Lord, then how to how is is it possible to listen to you? So I have to go to church. After discussions between the teacher and Alex's parents, Alex now has the Sabbath off. Alex is not alone in facing the challenge of attending school on Sabbath. Other Adventist students face the same problem. That's why this quarter, we can help expand the Adventist school beyond preschool all the way through high school. Please pray for our church ministry in Andaman Nicobar Islands. All our church members pray for the an Adventist school in a higher level, that is, till up to high school, because all Adventist uh, children should continue their education here itself without any problem, without any difficulties. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help build the new Seventh-day Adventist English school in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, providing a higher level of education so more people can learn about the love of Jesus. Thank you so much for supporting us through 13th Sabbath School Mission Offerings. Our Adventist edu education is so important, and so we always need to keep our schools in prayer, the administrators and teachers in prayer, and obviously support financially as well, because they need your support, they need our support. And so as we um, continue on studying the Sabbath school lesson, keep that in mind. Keep in mind that we're more than just studiers or uh, followers of the Bible. We are also to put the words of God into action in our lives and to support with our prayer, with our financial assets, and even with our time. And so as we, as we uh, close off in our Sabbath school lesson today, let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this time. And as we've studied the lesson, Lord, please enthrone yourself on our heart. Today, we open up our hearts to you. We ask that you please reign in our lives, reign in our hearts, that we may do your will and may speak the truth and live the truth. Lord, I pray in a special way for all of our schools and all of those working in our schools. Lord, I pray that at the head of every school and at the head of every principal's and teacher's heart, you will be enthroned there and that others will see you, the King of glory, exemplified in each one of those individuals' lives. And so I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we close our Sabbath school, we're going to leave this little short video clip for you to watch. I want you to experience how Jewish people sing the Psalms. This particular one, Psalm 121, is the song of ascent. I will lift my eyes to the hills. We know it, but I want you to hear it in, in Jewish, in Hebrew, in Hebrew language, Shir Lamalot. And so to get that experience of how the Psalms were sung. <laughs> Shilamalot, 
Hashem Shomrecha, Hashem Tzilcha, Al Yad Yeminecha. Yom HaMashem Esh no Yakeka, Ve'areach Balayla, Hashem Yishmocha, Kol Ra, Yishmor Et Nafshecha. Hashem ishmor tzedcha uvoecha Me'ata ve'ad olam Me'ata ve'ad olam Shira malot Esa enay elearim Be'ay Hashem <laughs> Al yad yeminecha Yom ha-mashem esh no yakeka Me'areach balayla Hashem ishmocha mikol ra Ishmoch et nafshecha Hashem ishmoch tzedcha uvoecha Me'ata Hashem Shomrecha, Hashem Tzilcha, Al Yad Yeminecha. Yom Am Hashem Esh no Yakeka, Ve'areach Balayla. Hashem Ishmocha, Mikol Ra, Ishmor Et Nafshecha. Hashem Ishmor Tzedcha Uvoecha. Me'ata ve'ad olam Me'ata ve'ad olam Me'ata ve'ad olam 